Hello everyone, this is Zarafira, and welcome back to Going Medieval. Uh, so I've already gone through spring for the most part. I'll show you what I've been up to in a moment. But right now, summer has hit us. Uh, we already talked about this before in previous episodes. Again, high temperatures, a uh, chance of heat waves, build underground storage to keep your food fresh during the hot summer days. We've already done that. Uh, in fact, it's actually getting a little over full. I started making lavish meals, which is the same, if you look, uh, a regular meal is 12 cooking material and one fuel, where the lavish meal is 12 cooking material, one herb, and one fuel. So it also requires is an extra herb. Um, and let's just look at Osgood really quick. In an exquisite meal. So when they eat the lavish meal, uh, they get this uh, added modifier, like Reynard right now, uh, as he finishes it, boom, uh, there we go, Ate an exquisite meal, so uh, they get a little bonus, the only problem with that though is, even in the summer here, so it's 45 degrees in this little um, cellar slash pantry. Um, it's considered inside. Hopefully that stays at 45 degrees. But you can see this is going to take 26 days to decompose or 19 days to rot. Not good. Um, this is going to decompose in 11 days. So the lavish meal takes uh, only 11 days to decompose. Yeah, um, so it's kind of a, I don't know, a trade-off. Um, you're getting better uh, mood for eating this lavish meal, but they don't last as long. Uh, and I don't know what's going to happen with the heat wave. Hopefully it stays, well, it's already 45.6 inside right now. Um, we'll see as the day goes on. I don't know if I need to make a, a different or something further under the mountain if it's if it, it'll get uh, cooler or stay cooler inside uh, but we're uh, we're not at that point yet right now this is working for us it's just a little small I might make an offshoot in another cellar back here I, I don't know yet uh, but at least our food situation is much improved the other thing is, we've been doing a lot of building. Um, I built the walls up along these edges. We've, uh, well, we've already seen that this is complete. We finished the wall up here, but I've also been working on what I'm going to call uh, the Maria Altard Library. Since Maria died last episode, I've decided to make some sort of structure uh, in remembrance of her. So I've decided it's going to be a library and this is basically the, out, uh, the outline of it. So it's on another tier uh, of our, I don't know, settlement here. Um, you have to come up the stairs here. There's a wolf apparently inside that's really not bothering us. Um, come in and then the door to the library goes in here. I think eventually all of this will get closed in. As you can see there's lots of rabbits running around. I don't want to hunt them yet. I want to get them closer to the fall to make uh, smoked meat with. So we'll, we'll leave those guys alone for now. Um, but yeah, so it's uh, they've been working pretty hard on this and uh, I saw that there's some grass up here so I decided to make a little garden. And I'm going to try something. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'm building a bunch of um, braziers out here. I don't think that even with them all on, it will allow us to grow during the winter. But I don't know. We're, we're going to give it a shot. Um, I, I don't think it's going to work. Um, and I also am curious, like, if I put a, a roof over it, will they... Will they be able to grow? I mean, I did 
there's a roof over these red currant bushes outside the gatehouse, and they're they seem to be growing pretty pretty well actually. So um, I don't, we might give that a shot. I don't want to totally enclose it because I think once they're inside, I don't I don't know. I I guess we'll find out. Um, <laughs> and this kind of this lone tree is supposed to be uh, Maria's tree, um, little kind of tree growing in her uh, remembrance, I guess. Um, so with that said, I'm going to cut away. And um, well, it looks like they already got it enclosed. Um, we need to, I, I was going to cut away, but I guess we're going to start building the floor. So the other reason I'm building this, especially making it as big as it is, is a couple, couple reasons is... Uh, I want to get rid of all this stone. <laughs> we've, we've had so much stone uh, laying around for such a long time. I just want to get rid of it. And the other reason is, I guess it's not quite a close. There's a couple of things I have to do. Um, I, I don't know how much space I'm, I need for research materials. And this area currently is the hardest to get to in the village, at least for an outsider to get to. It's not too bad for the people inside, um, but I think it'll be the hardest for, for a raid to get to. They'd have to go through the entire encampment to get to this area first. And we may as well make the roof. Can't. Okay, so there's one one spot that isn't quite. I don't know. Well, I guess it's three. Um, I'm not sure about building. I was going to put down. In fact, let's do that. Let's put it right in the middle. Instead of building. Um, beams. I'm going to build basically pillars and I'm going to put um, the bookcases on these pillars. Okay, so this area is obviously much bigger. Um, we're going to have to, we'll see what happens as we put them down. So, yep, yeah, I think you kind of get the gist of it. We're going to make these pillars in order, to, in order to hold bookcases on, so it'll make it look even more like a library. Um, but I'm going to do that kind of behind the scenes, and I guess I'll see you guys in a little bit. Uh, all right. All right, so the other reason that I'm building the library over here is we have research available. Uh, uh, we do need to start working on these other things, but some of these, you know, I guess none of these that are here, but preserving food, which is going to be especially important since the second winter is coming, uh, we're going to need the second type of research here, um, textbooks. In order to do that, you need research two, uh, and then research three is going to be needed for distilling, for making alcohol. Um, we're going to need the textbooks for fermenting to make vinegar, and especially now that we're making um, alcohol for our uh, settlers. It's possible it may go bad. I know right now they're drinking it so fast uh, it's not staying in the, in the sock pile, but um, anyway, we need, to, we need to get that going, which will unlock the research table uh, in order to make the textbooks. And then there'll be an advanced research table later for the thesis uh, um, <laughs> resource, I guess. Um, but anyway, right now we're going to unlock that. 
we're also going to let's actually have a look research we're missing these and I think everything else actually even when we get this far up is going to require um, the, the regular chronicles as well and I believe I heard that they're adding more research as they go this is still alpha so but to start out with I want armor which is 30 I'm gonna want blacksmithing because I'm gonna want to make some of these better weapons uh, which is another 30 so I'm gonna set Elmer to well not Elmer but the actual research table that we have now to make 60 more chronicles which unfortunately we're gonna have to move uh, the library isn't quite ready yet to house anything um, but you can kind of see the outline of all the pillars that I've got in there um, where the bookcases will go eventually I think I'll put some bookcases on the walls as well and then I'm gonna to have to find spots to where I'm gonna put the research tables I'm gonna need room for at least three research tables and then I don't know this one the last one seems kind of big it doesn't give me a description of how big it is hopefully this one's not too bad this one looks like it's three by three by two maybe um, can we see what the other one was or oh that just came um, it doesn't it's not researchable because you need it to start research anyway this one apparently three by three maybe um, hopefully there's enough room in here uh, I always make a second floor which I might do anyway I don't know if I want it to all be library though anyway that's where we are it is approaching day three here in the summer um, apparently nobody wants to turn off these braziers <laughs> or they're off and it just doesn't appear to be off I, I don't know um, as long as they're not using fuel anyway um, that's what we got going uh, I'll see you as either uh, something pops up or we get the library finished. Um, see you guys in a little bit. I don't know why it says close there in the middle of my screen. Okay. <laughs> All right. So apparently, uh, Isabel, appearing deranged at first, was simply overcome with terror. A pitiful stumbling corpse with wheels from binding and harsh beatings by a cruel master. Isabel begged, hide me, I will die if I am caught. So, obviously we can uh, not bring her in, and that will give us a negative mood modifier. And again, if you help her, uh, this is this is Isabel. I don't know what the bottom two things are. Uh, an arrow through the foot does not look like a good thing. Um, neither does that sore on her foot, uh, what appears to be her toe or something. Um, but she's good at tailoring, so that'll free up Osgood from tailoring so that he can do nothing but cook if he needs to. Um, otherwise, we're going to get four, five, six, seven, eight bandits. None of them appear to be archers, but or uh, siege engines for that matter, but we're going to take her in. We have plenty of food at the moment. And there she is. Uh, did she spawn on top of the mountain or something? Yep. So, yeah, we're down here. She's at the very top. And she's on her way down into us. The enemies are coming in a day and a half. Uh, so, one of the things I made was a little path uh, on the way to the library. It makes people move a little faster. Uh, if you look at the bottom left, tra uh, traversal speed uh, 120 where if they were just on limestone or rocky soil, it's only at 100%. Um, so I mean, they got a 20% modifier. They've been working on the roof. It's still not enclosed. Let's bring the thing down and look at the flooring as well. Uh, they're, I don't know, they're getting there. Uh, and Isabel is still pretty far out. Getting about to where uh, Maria was when she was caught by the bandits last time. But, 
We've got plenty of beds since we have all the other beds still in the storehouse. We've got the nice beds inside, which I'm guessing she's going to go to. I don't know why she's heading straight for the pyre. <laughs> um, let's just have a look at her. Where? Okay, the ants beat her up. And three times. Okay, so I don't know what she was doing there. Um, I think she's headed to one of the better beds, which is fine. Oh, no, she's going to eat first. So let's have a look at her perks. So she's got runs like the wind, the feet as a deer. She also walks at quite a clip. So, so, so this is actually good. You'd think they'd put like a, a wing on her foot instead of an arrow, but um, vulnerable suffers uh, constant from gout or flux and her wound generation is lower. Um, okay. That's fine. It just might take a little, little while for her to heal up. All right. So I should actually probably schedule her something. Um, I usually give them a little more time to sleep. It's 2100, so she's already sleeping. I may as well give her a few more sleep hours here. She's going to work. Almost just like Ralph was doing. And we'll just stagger her work hours like that. In fact, I'm going to give her one more leisure hour. Uh, let's see, where is Osgood up? So he's working there. Doing nothing about there. So they might be overlapped. A no, he's sleeping there. Um... He's working here, so let's give her some leisure there. All right, here we are. Um, the boot so <laughs> spoke soft but menacing. Isabel belongs to me. Hand over my slave, or you will all suffer. <laughs> they were deadly serious. Um, we're not gonna surrender her back. That would give us a negative mood modifier. Uh, we've already got her working. She's been doing a lot of working on tailoring already. Um, so we get a good. Uh, mood modifier for helping someone and uh, approximately eight bandits again. Again, I don't see any uh, archers, so uh, refuse to bow. We stood our ground, refusing to give another demands, took up arms. Okay, so they're a little further away. This time we don't have people uh, sitting out about everyone's inside so we'll wait for the the battle to start before we start moving people around um, some of them are sleeping and let's see here for he's sleeping he's one that I want to be uh, not <laughs> Uh, too tired or whatever, like groggy or mad that I woke him up. Okay, wow, they're way up there. Wow, that guy's that guy's carrying a big a big weapon there. Um, well, they're on our way. Six o'clock, and Harifrit is hungry. He's gonna get some food. There he goes. Okay, and he's gardening, but you're not gonna garden. You're gonna move back to where I always put you. And there, and there. Uh, Osgood is sleeping. I'll let him sleep for now. I think Herefrith will be able to manage most of this. I think I'm going to make Isabel another marksman. She's got zero skill in marksmanship, but <laughs> I don't know. How close do we got? Um, he's a three. He's a three. Two, well, he's already an ar archer. One, 
and a 9. And Rob actually does not have anything equipped. Um, at least weapon wise. So I guess we'll, we'll change to Ralph. And he will pick up this bow. Of course, he's way up there in the library. They're not really moving that quickly. And I think Ralph is well, he's wearing plate armor. There he goes. Okay. And stop, Ralph, because I want you on the opposite end here. Now, with a big, huge, it almost looks like a battering ram, that, uh, is it Seaward? I don't know how well the doors are going to hold up against that. <laughs> same direction. Okay, there's another trap that hit. Okay, one down. I don't know what Seaward's just walking around. I'm fine with that. I don't want that big club banging on my door. Door's not looking too great right there, actually. Um, yeah, it's already at 19 out of 20. It's it's going down. Let's see. Martin isn't coming in. Uh, I think it's time to wake Osgood up. Now we have a couple sets of doors. I just want people to be able to shoot. And I did leave this open actually for people to shoot in. Wow. Okay. Yep. We're kind of taking some damage here. Reynard's already unconscious, looks like. Alright, let's move. I, I think I left that open. No, nope, maybe I didn't. Yep, Elmer looks like he's unconscious at the same time, but everyone else is looking like they have lots of damage. Let's move Ralph. Actually, let's move Herefrith. I don't know if he'll have a good angle there or not. Yeah, let's move Ralph here, and let's move Osgood, if possible, out here as well. Come on, Osgood. Looks like Ralph is taking some good shots at the people who are trying to get away. Or sorry, Herefrith was. Okay, another another dead. There we go. 
Okay, the beleaguered settlers came under attack in December of 1354. The ordeal continued for seven hours and 25 minutes. Firstly, all settlers survived the raid. Six sworn enemies died. Ralph was the bravest of the settlers, dealing the most damage. Osgood took the most damage. Osgood blocked the most hits. Uh, some of the buildings were destroyed under the bombardments and doors. So we might want to, well, we will need to um, upgrade our doors. We can make reinforced and iron grates now. Um, and uh, I think with that said, uh, after winning yet another battle, uh, as always, really thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the series. And I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.